my name is Jess, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. I upload every single week, usually on a Sunday. I upload a whole host of different content and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read during the month of August. So let's jump straight in. going to talk about is The Reckoning by John Grisham and I am a huge huge Grisham fan. I read my first John Grisham which I think was The Client when I was about 11 years old and that's not necessarily something that I recommend but I have always always loved his books and in The Reckoning John Grisham tries to do something a little bit different and it almost almost works. Uh, basically along with the crime thriller element of his usual books, John Grisham has attempted to introduce some historical fiction. So the basic premise of this book is that we have a man called Pete Banning who is Clanton's favourite son. He is a returned war hero, um, he comes from a very well-known, well-liked, prominent family and one morning, seemingly completely out of the blue, Pete Banning gets up drives into the town and shoots dead the town's reverend. He immediately owns up to the crime but he will not say why he did it, he just offers up a no comment. Um, and so we're kind of exploring um, the events which lead up to Banning's decision to do this. Um, we're also flicking backwards in time to when Banning was a soldier in the Second World War and he was posted in the Philippines. The Philippines were then subsequently invaded and conquered by the Japanese. Um, Banning is a Japanese prisoner of war. He then escapes and becomes a guerrilla working with the Filipino people. So he has this hell of of an experience in the war and John Grisham uses this to kind of explore the differences between what makes a man a hero and what makes a man a villain and the grey areas between uh, what is right, what is necessary and then what is wrong and I think that he, he does that fairly well. Um, for me the weaknesses came with the historical fiction element I mean, this was a section of the Second World War that I didn't know that much about and I love Second World War stories um, but kind of the American involvement in Asia is not something that I'm hugely familiar with. So for me it was really interesting to read that but rather than tell it through the story, I felt like Grisham dumped a lot of facts on us and tried to squeeze in a lot of facts without telling a story. and. It was almost like he was showing off how much research he'd done and how much he knew about this period and that's why he could write about it and that was great but it just felt a lot like info dumping and it got a little bit boring in places but on the whole I enjoyed it, I thought that it was very clever, I was left with a few questions at the end which is interesting considering this is one of his bigger books at almost 500 pages um, but yeah. I thought that it was a solid attempt, I think I gave it three and a half stars, not one of my favourite of his, but I enjoyed that he tried to do something a little bit different and I certainly learned something from it so um, yeah that's always a plus. The next book I read was The President is Missing by Bill Clinton and James Patterson. This was passed to me by someone at work um, and they thought that I might be interested to read it because it was written by the Bill Clinton. Um, and I'll admit that it definitely did pique my interest but ultimately this was a swing and a miss for me. Uh, basically it's a political thriller um, in which the USA is facing its biggest threat from terrorists yet. It appears that there may be a traitor within the walls of the White House and so when the president has no one to trust he must go it alone. Um, and I will say that I have read some of James Patterson's early books, um, albeit I read them when I was a teenager so maybe they seemed a little bit more um, gruesome back then, uh, but I have read some of his stuff and I went into this thinking that it was going to be along similar lines and by comparison it just felt so tame and it just wasn't what I was expecting at all and I don't mind uh, thrillers which are not too scary because I'm a big coward and uh, if they are too creepy then I generally can't read them but yeah it just it felt like a thriller without any of the thrill 
almost. Um, I don't even mind in books when characters get lucky and things kind of just fall into their laps and it's like oh wasn't that convenient but somehow this book just missed the mark. The president is portrayed as this ruddy cheeked uh, saviour of the world who just gets lucky again and again and again and it just yeah it just tame is the right word for it really for me. Um, it was okay we got an insight into what Bill Clinton thinks about the current political climate in America at the moment um, but apart from that this was a two star read for me. I was utterly disappointed. I was expecting something much darker uh, and much more spine tingling than this. Um, and it just, yeah, I think I've said it three times now, but tame is the word for this book. So if you want a fairly easy going political thriller, then you might actually enjoy this, but I was definitely expecting something a little bit more. The next book I picked up was one which I was very, very excited to read and that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. If you watched my last wrap up, you will know that Circe was one of my favourite books last month, possibly one of my favourite books of the year so far, if not my most favourite. So I went into this book with very high expectations. However, I did appreciate that this was Madeline Miller's debut, so I wasn't expecting it to be as honed as Cersei was um, and honestly I think as I was reading it I felt like it was a little bit slow but now on reflection I, there's just so much to love about the way that Madeleine Miller writes there's something so enchanting about the way she writes that you just get utterly utterly caught up in it and oh I love this I loved it. Madeline Miller has 100% become an auto by author for me because this was just fantastic. So this is, as you might expect, the story of Greek hero Achilles um, and it's told mainly from the point of view of Achilles' closest friend, Achilles' closest friend, Patroclus. Um, I really, really loved the way that Madeline Miller portrayed the relationship between Patroclus and Achilles. I'm sorry if it's Patroclus. If I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. Um, I, yeah, I really like the way that she portrayed their relationship. I liked the way that the story kind of unfolded at a distance almost. Um, this book is, uh, let me think of some adjectives. Okay, this book is heartbreaking and sexy and dark and twisty and a little bit violent and it just, just about everything else in between. It's just so, so good. Um, I will say criticisms of it because you know, got to be fair um there were some elements of the book which I felt like Miller skipped over I can't say too much because they're quite spoilery but there is something later on in the book that Achilles does which is actually really grim and gruesome and I felt like we just kind of told it and then it was gone um but it's actually quite a horrible thing and I really feel like she could have made more of it and made the book just that little bit more um dark and delicious and yeah it would have just fit really well with the tone of the book I thought um I also did feel like the ending was a little bit rushed um but that might just be because by the time I got there <laughs> I didn't want it to finish I just wanted to keep on reading um I don't know but yeah, honestly, if you've read Cersei and enjoyed Cersei, then I think that you will enjoy this. If you've never read a Greek mythological retelling, then again, I would highly, highly recommend this. It's so easy to read. I was really worried before I picked up Cersei that I wouldn't follow the story, but she just tells it in such a great way. Honestly, it's fantastic. And yeah, I loved it. Loved it. The next book I picked up was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and if you have been anywhere in the book community then I'm sure you will have seen plenty of buzz and plenty of hype surrounding this book and I was really curious to see what all the fuss was about. Um, I've never read anything by Taylor Jenkins Reid before although I do own her other book um, is it The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo? Uh, maybe, I'm not sure. I will fact check that. But um, yeah, never read anything by her, but I was so curious to see what all the fuss was about with this book. And honestly, I really enjoyed it. The story basically focuses on a rock and roll band in the 70s who, at the very height of their career, suddenly disband for no 
apparent reason um, but the thing that is unique about this book is the way that the story is told it's basically told in sound bites from interviews um, from members of the band and people who were connected to the band in some way when they were together um, and so you kind of follow the whole story of the band from when they are nobodies to when they go on to become one of the biggest bands in the world through these interview sound bites and I actually thought that the book would read much quicker than it did because of the way that it was written but I found it quite slow going to begin with and I'm not sure if that is because as a reader my personal preference is for strong character development and strong connections with my characters is really important um, and you don't initially get that connection with the characters because you're just getting little snippets from them um, but as the story progressed um, you did begin to see different character personalities coming out um, and I actually cried at the end which for me is a real sign that I've connected with a character um, if something negative happens and I find myself moved by it so I was surprised that I actually had connected with the characters because it felt a little bit off for me um, but honestly the format although it's a criticism that I didn't connect with the characters the format is actually one of the cleverest elements of this book and the way that Taylor Jenkins Reid describes the setting and just so much about it so many times when I was reading it I stopped and went to google something before I realized that it wasn't real and the band didn't exist and the songs weren't real um, yeah she just really manages to capture the time period and the era and the feel of it it was just exactly how I always imagined that it would be um, I thought that she captured that so so well um, in this book so yeah I think that overall it was a really solid book um, as I said the format is really what makes it but it's also its strongest point and its weakest point for me um, because I would have liked to have more fleshed out characters I guess but overall I definitely see what all the buzz is about. I'm not going to say too much about the story itself because I think it's best going in blind and discovering for yourself why the band broke up. Um, but yeah I think I gave this three and a half or 3.75 stars. It was good. Did it blow my socks off? No. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Uh, it was a solid read and I would recommend it if you are curious to see what all the fuss is about for yourself. And the final book that I read this month was A Spark of Light by Jodie Picoult. This was a much anticipated read for me. I have had the paperback version of this book on pre-order for a very long time. So I was excited when it finally arrived. Um, yeah, I'm a huge Jodie Picoult fan. Um, she's an auto buy author for me. So I was curious to see how I would get on with this one, especially because I have seen a number of mixed reviews um, about this book. So... The basic premise is that we have a shooter slash hostage situation in a Mississippi uh, abortion clinic and Picoult is basically using this hostage situation to examine humanity and why we take such strong opposing views to abortion and um, whether we are pro-life or pro-choice and how sometimes those lines need to be blurred and um, yeah it just has the hallmarks of your typical occult novel in that she has taken a um, inflammatory topic and written about it basically and challenges some of the auto views that the reader may have um, which is the thing that I love about her books I always walk away having had something to think about and consider um, so it becomes very apparent very quickly um, that the shooter has experienced some kind of emotional trigger that has forced his hand and made him take this action and one of the unique things about this book is that we count back in time um, so we get to meet all the different different hostages and see the reasons that why they've come to the clinic um, and we also get to uncover more about what has made the shooter decide to go into the clinic. Um, we also get the point of view of the hostage negotiator because shock horror his daughter is inside the clinic and that's not a spoiler because you find that out like right at the beginning. Um, my criticisms of this book would be that the ending was really rushed. I mean, this is a tiny size for Picoult's normal books um, and I felt like the ending was really rushed and in the very last chapter, this huge secret is revealed um, 
and that's it like you just hold it and there's no kind of resolution to that and I, I'm really big on resolutions I really like if something is introduced if a topic is introduced particularly if it is quite an important one that there has to be some kind of resolution for it I hate it when there are loose ends um, and there is a massive loose end left um, in this book and also because we're going back in time you don't actually get much resolution for the end of the book either and um, so you kind of follow these characters journeys and you find out why they've come to the clinic but you don't actually see many of their stories resolved um, and I didn't like that I felt like she could have just tagged something on the end and kind of wrapped it all up neatly but I guess that's what she chose to do and um, the author's note is really interesting and well worth reading in this um, I always love her author's note I loved her author's note in small great things I felt that it really helped add depth to the story and this is no different I really really appreciated her taking the time to write such an in-depth author's note and kind of just give an opinion on where, why she decided to write the book and all that kind of stuff so overall I enjoyed it it's probably not one of my favorite ones that she's written but as I said I usually walk away with something to think about um, I did appreciate the way that she gave a balanced view of the pro-life pro-choice um, and kind of tried to cover that not everybody is so extreme um, as sometimes the media might make out and that everyone kind of has their own reasons for why they think the way that they think and yeah I appreciated that um, as far as your usual cult novel goes, if you are a fan of hers, then I think that you will enjoy this. I think it ticks all the boxes, or the majority of the boxes. Um, if you are new to the cult, I probably wouldn't start with this one. I would recommend one of her big ones, like My Sister's Keeper or The Storyteller. Uh, but yeah, it was an okay read. Was it better than okay? No, I feel like I feel like this was an okay read for me. So there you go, they are the books that I read during the month of August. Do leave me a comment and let me know your favourite book that you read last month. I always love to know. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me the thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel for more content. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.